the king, he can't drink at his own party. What's up with that? This is basically like an old school interview problem. I'll explain the premise. A king's throwing a party, he wants to have a good time, get drunk. He invites a thousand people. They all show up, bringing a bottle of wine. They present it to the king, you know, he throws it on his big table with all these bottles of wine. But then the queen, you know, whispers into his ear. One of the bottles that someone brought is poisoned. And so he's like, oh dang, dude, we can't, we can't start the party. We gotta, we gotta wait, figure out which one of these bottles is poison, blah, blah, blah. Cause this is like all the alcohol he has for whatever reason, doesn't make any sense, but. And the poison is like chemically undetectable. He can't just like test like a little drop on some little chemical paper or some crap like that. He's gotta like have someone drink the poison and then about an hour later, the poison kicks in and will kill the person after they've drunk it. He has 10 prisoners and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna put their lives on the line to help me figure this out. You know, I was gonna execute him tomorrow anyway, so who cares, right? He grabs his like 10 prisoners and he's thinking like, okay, how can I use these 10 guys to figure out which bottle has the poison in it? You know, so there's like the obvious solutions of, you know, maybe you have the 10 guys drink bottles and then wait an hour and then have them drink more bottles, wait an hour, blah, blah, blah. But that's like a thousand bottles of wine, 10 prisoners. That's like a hundred hours each, but on average, you'll find it like half the way through. So it'd be like 50 hours. That's like too much time. You know, the party wouldn't get started for two days. That's, that's a bummer, right? So he can't do it that way. Maybe he can get like a prisoner to you know, take a sip from a bottle, then write down like, okay, I took a sip from bottle number one and it's 6.03. And take a sip from bottle number two, oh, it's 6.04. And then when he drops dead eventually and it's like 7.30, then someone could look at his notes and be like, oh, if he drank bottle number 35 back at 6.30 and it's 7.30 when he drops dead, maybe it's that bottle. But again, like the poison takes like around an hour to kick in. So that technique wouldn't really work and it would take forever. So we need to think of something like more clever, right? The idea that King comes up with is if I create some interesting comment combination of wine to throw in cups like this. I have each prisoner drink a cup of wine within this cup, tons of little bits of a lot of different wine bottles, and then wait an hour, see which prisoners die. You could figure out which wine bottle was poison. Seems kind of weird, it seems kind of complicated, but I'll throw up the screen recorder and show you guys how it works. Audio sync. Thousand bottles of wine, 10 prisoners. I'm gonna break this up into smaller numbers here. We have three prisoners, eight bottles of wine. We're basically going to use bits. Now, bits are like some CS, computer science, nerdy thing, whatever. You know, it's like all zeros and ones and ones and zeros and blah, blah, blah. I'll show you how to do that. Bit counting, if we're going to try to represent eight different possibilities, it's going to go zero, zero, zero. This represents zero. Zero, zero, one. That represents one. And then we count up. And this is kind of the pattern of how it works, you know? You can like look up exactly what this is later, but uh, yeah, I'll just write this out. These are going to be the values of zero to seven. Basically, you can have zero through seven represent bottle one through eight. Same idea. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now, let me actually write, since each of these is going to represent a wine bottle, I'm just going to have it like this just to make this a little easier to understand. So this is like wine bottle number. Wine bottle number if you can read that. Wine bottle number one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. Then we have, you know, prisoner like one, two, and three, okay? These numbers are basically gonna represent little bits of wine we take from each bottle and then put into the cup that we give to each prisoner. I'm gonna write this off to the side here. Let's say we have prisoner one, two, and three. You know, they've each got like the, a cup. For wine bottle number one, we're actually not gonna put any wine from this bottle into any of the cups. For wine bottle number two, we're gonna take a little bit of this bottle and put it into the cup for number three, a little sip of two. For the third wine bottle, we're gonna throw a little sip into prisoner number two's bottle. Little sip from wine bottle number three, and then you can kind of see how this moves on. Little sip of, of wine bottle number four into the cups for prisoner two and three. So that, ba, 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 ba. In this first cup, we'll have a little sip of five, six, seven, eight. In this second cup, we'll have a little sip of like three, four, seven, and eight. And the third cup, we'll have a little sip of like two, four, six, eight. We're gonna have prisoner one, two, and three each drink their cup filled with little bits of wine from a lot of different bottles. And let's say no prisoners die. Well, no prisoners died. The only bottle that it could be is wine bottle number one because none of them drank from that bottle. Now let's say prisoners two and three died. Well. If two and three died, they both exclusively only took sips from bottle number four, and so we know that bottle number four has the poison. If all three of them died, it's bottle number eight. If prisoners number one and two died, it's bottle number seven. If only prisoner number one died, then we know it's bottle number five, etc., etc. And this exact same idea would apply to the original problem of a thousand bottles of wine and ten prisoners. And one more thing I'll explain is like, how do they come up with these numbers ten? 
and a thousand. And how did I come up with these numbers three and eight? With 10 bits, I can represent two to the 10 different numbers. And two to the 10 is equal to 1024. So technically speaking, even if a couple people had like brought their buddies to the party, and you know, an extra 24 buddies had brought 24 extra bottles of wine, we could still get this done. And then the reasons I use three and eight is because two to the third is equal to eight. So we could not have just three prisoners to test nine wine bottles. That would be one too many. And yeah, I think that's the general idea of it. Hopefully you learned something. This is in Water, by the way, I was the prisoner of a Russian king and all of his guests brought vodka to the party, so. All right, see ya.